teams. United. In Europa League, Europa, Europa, Europa League. Let me tell them one time. I'm Cam, uh, first League. game under Eric Ten Hag in the, in the Europa League. It brings in the changes as we thought would happen. Not as many as we thought because, you know, even I was saying, nah, mate, you can't make too many changes. Hardest game of the group at home. Anyway, um, and we lost. The, the quality just wasn't there today, was it? No, and more than the result, I think what I wanted to see, and we said it on the full view, was that actually all we want to see is the players that come in, show the attitude, show the desire, show that you're willing to work as hard as the players that have been playing in your positions. Maguire, are you prepared to work as hard as Martinez, Lindelof with Varane, or whichever way round it is, and everyone else that comes in, you've got to be able to do the work that everyone else is doing, getting back into shape. Ronaldo as well. A lot of questions to answer, and none of them really answered their questions. So mm. They didn't give, they, you know, this is a day where a game, sorry, where, you know, they can give Ten Hag something to think about, you know? OK, Luke Shaw, it was weird that Luke Shaw wasn't in the team. I don't know whether, whether Ten Hag said it's got to be. Same with Wan-Bissaka. Yeah. They were both named on the bench. Well, uh, sorry, Wan-Bissaka was named on the bench. Uh, okay, so then he was sitting be. next to us up in, 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 the, in the stands. But mm. um, but players who did come in, you know, Anthony Alanga, um, Fred, Casemiro, Lindelof, Maguire. Um, there wasn't much, even Ronaldo, there wasn't much in there to, for them to say... Eric Ten Hag, I should be playing. Yeah, I mean, pretty much every video I've done so far this season, uh, whether it's fan cams, whether it's tactical view, whatever it is, I will sell on Casemiro, just be patient, give him time, because like, he's dropping right now, he's dropped a zero out of 10, realistically. Yeah. Fred's done the same. Oh. But the problem with Casemiro, right, is that you can see he looks up when he gets the ball, and at Madrid, he's used to having Kroos five yards away from him. He can give him the ball and he'll sort it out, whatever the situation yeah, exactly. is. And he's used to also having fullbacks on the touchlines as soon as they win the ball back. Here you haven't got that because we're because of Ten Hag system the fullbacks are a lot narrower. There aren't those easy passing out options, those easy out balls. So he's, he's looking up, panicking a bit, not sure what to do. Give him time, be patient. He's a better player at heart than Scott McTominay, so eventually he'll get there. Mm. Wouldn't worry too much about him. He'll get there eventually. Um, it might mean to get the best out of Casemiro, though, we might have to drop him into the back three, so that rather than having to worry about what's going on 360 degrees all around him, you just give him 180 degrees. If he's in that back line, building from the back, he's only got to worry about what's in front of him. It makes things a little bit simpler and hopefully helps us defending transitions as well. So that's a bit of a problem. In terms of Fred with that midfield... What do you, think, what do you think Ten Hag's thinking was in putting Fred as the 10, as the furthest midfielder forward? Because when we were sort of building up to the game, he was like, right, Fred and Casemiro are definitely going to play. They've, they've got to play next to each other. And you put Ericsson slash Bruno, whoever's going to do half and half, um, in the 10. But it wasn't. You had Ericsson in the six where he's been playing. And Fred was the furthest midfielder forward. Yeah, I think it was. It might have been a bit confusing, but realistically, the way the reason for it is if Donny van der Beek's fit, he plays as a ten instead of Fred. So what what we've seen so far is that he knows Ten Hag knows to build the ball out from the back, which is really important, especially when he's playing with fairly narrow team in general. You need players that are good between the lines and can zip it and can play diagonal passes incisively. Ericsson can do it. McTominay's done a decent job so far of doing it. Fred can't do that as a ten. You need Bruno there, or you need Ericsson in the ten role, but he's playing deep instead because we haven't got anyone else really that can do that. So basically, the, the thinking for Fred is just chuck him in because he's another midfielder and he can hopefully do a job. Mm. He can't. His body shapes all over the place. He's basically playing back to goal half the time. And look, Fred is a, he's a fraud. He's a stats fraud. You look at his completed passes, whatever percentage it is, not ten percent off that because half the completed passes he smacks it at a player from two yards away, and the next player's got to take five touches or loses it. Um, or sometimes it's like two yards in front of him or two yards to the side where the player's got a lunge. So yeah, technically it's a completed pass, but can't do anything with it, so it's not helpful. So he's a, he's a fraud. Mm. He wasn't uh, any good to start with, but he's still a fraud. Mm. And it, it just it just didn't work, innit? I mean, one thing you associate Fred with is his energy and getting about the pitch and giving heart. But when you're asking him to be the final piece, the final link between midfield and attack. You, you, you're kind of asking for trouble. Um, the rest of the front three, we say the front three in, in terms of Ronaldo, Anthony and Anthony Alanga. Um, how do you think they did today? I think Anthony, he did OK. I mean, he gets a bit of a new uh, free pass still because he's a new signing second game. Um, Alanga, not great, really. A couple of times. When he's aggressive, he's actually it's similar to what we've been saying for Rashford. What Alanga can't be doing is stopping down, stopping, slowing the ball. That's not what you're there to do. You're not there to make decisions. You're not there to think. Just run at your man, take him on, be aggressive. When he does that, something might happen. He's got no end product, so sometimes it doesn't. But that's what he's there to do. If he can't do that, there's no point in being in the team. You're playing with 10 men. Um, Cristiano Ronaldo. The number of times we've criticised him. Faz is pretty much all of us. Faz is flip-flopping every week, but yeah. the rest of us, he's no like, he can't do anything, can he? He's, he? He can't run. Um, we gave him credit for the for that role for the role in the goal yeah, at, um, at the weekend, but because he was pressing, he ran about five yards. He didn't do that today. Nothing. He's 
He doesn't want to be here. It doesn't look like he doesn't want to buy into Tanag system. Doesn't want to run. Do you think it was? Do you think? Do, do you see any of that? Of like, he's in the Europa League. You know, he don't play in that. Like, he's a bit feeling sorry for himself. He's a bit down. Or do you think it was just a bad team performance, which ended up sucking him into it? But all you saying individually, him himself just didn't. No, didn't it's up. it's him himself individually. There's been bad team performances in some of the games recently where we haven't been at our best as a team, even with the ball. But players are still working hard. He isn't. He doesn't care. He doesn't run in behind, doesn't press. He, he makes maybe, occasionally when the crowd gets on his back, he'll, he'll make a five-yard run to try and close the centre-back down, get there after the centre-back's played the ball and maybe push them a bit to try and look like he showed something. He's not fooling anyone. Terminate his contract. There's no point having him here. He is useless. I don't I don't care if he scores the odd goal here or there. Oh, so you've come to that conclusion. You're saying, leave, like, go. There's get, no point being there. Get rid of him. There's, there's no point. He's All he's doing is sucking the life out of players around him, sucking the life out, life out of the stadium. He wants everything for himself. You see, when he gives, when he gives other players passes, particularly to wingers he gives it but wait he always waits long enough that the only option they've got is cross it back into him he is so selfish it's embarrassing like you, you can't have that in the team really so from today that's what you was that's what you were seeing like that level from from him and 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 why he can't work for us anymore is that what you it's horrific his first touch is gone he's selfish on the ball selfish with his runs he's saving his energy for attacking which he isn't going to do anyway because he can't be bothered to run into the channels it's bad and the only thing you want him to do is sort of try and get on the end of long balls from De Gea because if we can't play through the middle because the midfield's not working yeah, they did go long quite you got long balls yeah De Gea doesn't doesn't put anywhere near a player in our coloured shirt it's distribution from him is horrific Ronaldo's crap at the top end of the team. So both of, both of those ends of the teams are the problem. Uh, and then everything in the middle was the problem today. So it's just a bit of a disaster all round. Does it prove that Ten Hag needs that first 11, you know, that 11 that's been going? You need Rashford being direct running off that wing. Anthony hopefully going to, you know, build up and, and do what he needs to do. You need um, Sancho in there as well for the fluidity. Definitely need De Bruno with the Ericsson combination. Does it show that he hasn't got much more than that, even though we've spoken about some decent players. Though. For me, the most important thing, you need Jogo Dallo playing, you need Scott McTominay, Ericsson and Bruno in midfield. If you have that, obviously Martinez and Varane at the back and hopefully Malassia, but that's a bit less important. Yeah. If you have those guys as the main core of the team, whatever three players in front of them, they'll get the ball. But the important thing is, because we play narrow under Ten Hag, it's minimum width. We've said it so many times. You've got to have players that can get on the half turn, play one and two touch combinations. It's incisive, it's designed to be that way. But if you've got players that are going to take too many touches, going to want to have to get their head up and look around every time they get the ball, it doesn't work. And we've seen that with Casemiro. Fred can't do what he needs to do. And so we can't play through the middle. If you can't play through the middle, you need your fullbacks to do something. Lindelof wasn't great when he went there in the second half. Um, not a lot from Malassia's side really either. And um, obviously the long ball didn't work either because the hair can't play it to a player in red. So... It's one of those where you need the midfield to function. That's the, obviously the most important area of the team. And if that doesn't function, you're hoping for the wings to function. Didn't really. And the long ball doesn't work either. So it's a bit of a disaster all around.